Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Kenny Wallace Show, brought to you by JEGS, the leader in high-performance aftermarket car parts. Remember to go to JEGS.com for everything and anything you need. Well, I'm back from Cabo. I celebrated my 60th birthday, and I feel refreshed. I raced yesterday in Quincy, Illinois. So for my very first race at 60 years old, I finished fourth out of 23 cars. And so, hey, what, what a good way to start uh, 60 years old. And I got a couple birthday gifts. Uh, I am uh, Sir Wallace. Got a nice... We got some nice friends all over the world. So this is Alastair Forsyth from Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, Alastair, I hope I say that right. Says He says, I appreciate your podcast and interviews, sharing your passion for racing and observation of people and their life. <laughs> and he, he's about right because when we do coffee with Kenny, that's just about what I see. But anyway, pretty cool shirt. Uh, this is a tribute to the people that watch us all over the world. That's pretty cool. So today's show, man, how about Ryan Priest? Um, when we do shows, we we either dream them up or what's in the news or what I read. Uh, so Ryan Priest, the reason this is such a big deal is I had a lot of people reach out to me. Hey, Kenny, Ryan Priest wreck just like your brother, Rusty. Well, let's start the show right there. Ryan Priest uh, at Daytona wrecks violently, flips. I mean, I, I didn't count them. I'm guessing 10 and then para I mean, it was scary. And uh, Ryan goes to the hospital. The very next day they release him and Ryan Priest says, if you want to be a race car driver, you better be tough. And basically, damn it, I had a fast race car. So Ryan Priest is okay. But um, when you look at what happened to my brother Rusty two times, 1982 coming off of uh, turn two at Daytona, man, I'll never forget that. Uh, Rick Wilson was driving the number four Kodak car. Rusty was around Richard Petty at the time. Uh, and we, we were nobody in 1982. We were nobody. We came out of St. Louis, and the back straightaway was all grass, and Rusty was wearing a, a red, the color of this, right, right there, red. It, Rusty was wearing a, a red fire suit, and our sponsor was Ramada Inn, 1982. Qualifying race, twin 125, and Rusty starts flipping violently after getting hit in the left rear by Rick Wilson. And, uh, oh my God, you know, I see it. I'm in the pits. Uh, believe it or not, I'm changing tires at that young age. Uh, they were letting me change tires at 14, 15 years old. I see it. I'm a, I'm a wreck. And I run to the infield care center at Daytona. And the ambulance comes back and up. And, I, and I'm looking in the window and, oh my God, I, I start crying. Because Rusty's wearing that red fire suit, Ramada Inn. Well, the sand down there, you have the grass, but the sand was black. Well, Rusty was covered in sand. When they got him in, into the infield care center at Daytona at the racetrack, they were digging sand out of his ears, out of his nose. I mean, it got up into his helmet. Uh, yes. You know, I mean, the sand was everywhere. Uh, and Rusty tells me this story because they wouldn't let me back in there right away. But, you know, they inevitably did let me back there. But, yes, Rusty's Rusty's first violent flip at Daytona was, was god-awful. And when he was flipping, that sand, that black sand came up through that car just like somebody spraying in there and just blasting it in the face. You know, remember back then I had open face helmets, open face helmets in 1982. Uh, and that's what he had on. So uh, very scary, uh, banged up. Uh, you know, that was catastrophic because we come out of St. Louis. It's all we had. And, uh, you know, you fast forward it, Rusty inevitably makes it back to NASCAR in 1989. So 82, 
83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Seven years later, Rusty makes it back, but uh, wins the ASA championship. He does a lot in between. So when you when you look at what happened to Ryan Priest, and then you know everybody on social media going, "Hey, Herman, your brother did the same thing," and now there was another one. Now this is the one that hurt Rusty. When you go to Talladega, I was in that race. That was uh, what was that, ninety three. Uh, I'm a rookie. So Ru yeah, Rusty's wreck was 1982. Sorry if I if I said 19. Yeah, 1982 was that wreck. I'm calculating years. 1982 was Rusty's bad wreck at Daytona. Oh my God! Then another one in the Miller Genuine Draft car. Wow, Charlie. The show. Uh, 1982 in the Ramadian car. Then he comes back and flips. Again, in the Miller Genuine draft car, that was 1993, and I'm rookie of the year that year. Or I go against Jeff Gordon and uh, Bobby Labonte. That was another flip. Then we go to Talladega. My Lord, no, Rusty flipped violently three times. I'm giving you the, the timeline now. Wow. And, and the one at Talladega, 1993, that's where Dale Earnhardt Sr. gets Rusty in the left rear. You know, Charlie, I don't know if you – I'm not holding you to this. Maybe you can find some snapshots uh, as we come across the start-finish line at Talladega. Now, that is the wreck that broke Rusty's wrist. Then he has something made for his wrist. Then we go to Sears Point, the road course race, and Rusty goes to shifting with this big, very famous black brace on. So, yes – I want to thank I want to thank all of you fans for reminding me. Uh, but now, as I break it down, I, I bet I'm thinking that everybody didn't remember the 1982 flip in the Ramada in car. So that's flip one, and that was violent. That was the one I told you with the black sand. Then the one in '93 where I'm a rookie, and I if you look at the replay, Rusty's flipping, and I go by in the Dirt Devil number 40 car. Uh, and then that same year, he flips again at Talladega. So if Rusty was ever, you know, a little timid of the super speedways, he has every reason because I just told you why. So uh, three big flips for big brother Rusty. Wow. Uh, so thank you fans for bringing that up. Now, let's let's uh, break Let's break uh, Ryan Priest's flip down. I do, I do see a lot of people out there commenting on the grass. Now, I agree. Here's the controversial take. I think that they need to get rid of all grass. Now, I know the grass is pretty, uh, but I will say this. In, in, uh, in Daytona International Motor Speedway, in their defense, I got on my phone. I went to NASCAR on NBC, and I broke it down frame by frame. There could be a small argument that at the very end, the, the, the front end digs in, and maybe, maybe the grass maybe keeps it flipping more. But the very start of the flip had nothing to do with the grass. Uh, you know, he just spins out. That air catches it. And now... Remember, I call these new next-gen cars, I have a nickname. The bottom are what we call turtle shells. If you, if you pick a turtle up, a turtle, it, it's completely smooth on the bottom. And, you know, aerodynamically, you know, this is kind of like the Indy cars. So the new next-gen car, buddy, as soon as, it, as soon as it picked up a little bit, it grabbed air and it went. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of lift underneath those – big 3,500 pound race cars, it gets to going. So I really think that Ryan's horrific wreck, uh, I, don't, I don't think the grass really had a lot to do with it. However, I'll meet you halfway. And as you break it down, I, listen, I watch, I'm just reminding you, I watched it frame by frame. But like I said, I'll, I'll meet you halfway. Grass doesn't help. It does not help especially with the pointy edges on the noses. But, uh, but listen, Ryan, I, I told you what Ryan said. He, he's, you know, they, they did need to keep him overnight. 
Hey, Ryan, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Let me go. Eh, we need to keep you overnight. That was a lot of, you know, he could have been a little dizzy. Uh, how, how many of you had a concussion and you go, I'm fine. And then you have the delayed uh, concussion. So making him spend the night in the hospital was the right thing to do. Brother Rusty says it best. He says, Herman, better safe than sorry. So Ryan Priest goes on to live another day. Thank the Lord. Uh, sometimes, you know, people bring up smart ass comments. Racing's dangerous. You should be prepared to die. Well, it is dangerous, but nobody wants to die. Um, you know, I'm not going to name names, but I, I have some very good friends that are old school racers and they're like, man, racing's dangerous. It's like they enjoy the thrill that I might die in a race car. Well, I don't listen. When we get in these race cars, we know that we can get hurt. But do we think we can die? Hell no. Hell, I'm not going to get in a race car knowing I'm going to die. Who the hell does anything going, well, I'm going to die. So my point is this. Innovation, time, time has gone on and on. And when I look back at 1989, there's some trading cards out there of me. And I'm just sitting in this seat and there's nothing around me. Just, I got seat belts. That's a good thing. But boy, we've come a long way. And listen, sometimes the cars can get gaudy. What I mean, just a lot. Because we do so much to, you know, save our drivers. So listen, we've lost some great ones. And anything we can do to make these cars safer. You and I sure would like to have Dale Earnhardt Sr. here. He hit that wall, killed himself. Neil Bonnet hit the wall right the exact same spot. Turn four at Daytona, died. Uh, Kenny Irwin, Blaze Alexander, we, the list goes on and on. But uh, better safe than sorry. The next gen car did its job, did its job. Ryan's Ryan Priest, you know, uh, tweeting. So uh, that's my breakdown. That so I, I believe I've answered everybody. Everybody said, "Hey, brother Rusty." Did a lot of flipping. So as we do the show, my mind gets to going, wow, three big flips. I forgot about all that. And uh, and then I gave you my breakdown of studying the dynamics of the Ryan Priest wreck. Gets sideways, gets up a little bit. The turtle shell, smooth bottom of the race car, lifts it up. Nowhere for the air to go because it's, it's smooth. The car just, the air hits here. Nowhere. No penetration of air anywhere. Just bam, full lift, full lift, starts flipping. And like I said, I really don't think the grass had a lot to do with it. At the end, maybe. At the very end, maybe. But uh, listen, uh, grass is beautiful. But I, I do believe here we are in a, in a new era. I think they do need to get rid of the grass. Uh, you know, on the front straightaway at Daytona, they tear that grass up for the big motocross race. So they, I guess they can lay that grass in and out as quick as they want to. So w during bike week at Daytona, they take the front straightaway there and they just destroy it and put in a motocross. So anyway, I, I know grass is pretty, but it might save some lives if we get rid of the grass, asphalt. Hell, paint it, paint it green, right? Respond right here. All right, I think I broke down the Ryan Priest flip, the history of flips. We've seen a lot of flips. Uh, and, and, and listen, we could go on and on. Jeff Bodine's catastrophic flip. But this, this flipping story, this flipping story is about cars just getting sideways and taking off. So some of the, some of the ones on the front straightaway, it's where they kind of got into the fence. And so anyway, all right, everybody remember. Uh, we're in podcast form and we're starting to show up. So remember, iTunes, Spotify, please like and subscribe. And uh, all right, until the next show, we'll see you next time.